renewable energy is more expensive to generate than conventional energy. This is partly because most renewable technologies are quite new, so don't enjoy the benefits of mass production. But it's also because the true costs of using gas, coal, oil and nuclear, the carbon dioxide emissions, the acid emissions, the radioactive waste are ignored, or rather left for future generations to pay. Left to their own devices, energy markets would tend not to encourage investment in renewable energy projects. To address this, Governments around the world, including the UK, have introduced a range of different support mechanisms to boost the value of renewable energy and create a viable market. In the UK, there are currently two key mechanisms supporting renewable electricity generation. One, the renewable obligation introduced in the late 1990s and the other, feed-in tariffs mainly for smaller projects introduced in 2010. The Renewables Obligation places a requirement on energy suppliers to purchase a set percentage of the electricity they supply from renewable energy generators, which could include you. This percentage is increasing over time. Electricity generators who have registered with the energy regulator receive a Renewable Obligation Certificate, or ROC, for every megawatt hour, that's a thousand units, of renewable electricity they generate. Some types of renewables, like wave and solar, get more than one rock per megawatt hour to reflect their currently higher generation cost per unit. At a simplistic level, the energy suppliers are prepared to pay a premium for the renewable electricity and write long-term contracts or power purchase agreements to projects like yours to buy this renewable electricity and get your renewable obligation certificates in return. The suppliers have to submit these rocks to the energy regulator to demonstrate they have met the obligation or pay a set buyout levy instead. Because of the complexity of the renewable obligation system and other aspects of the electricity trading system, there is some uncertainty in predicting the price of rocks and of the electricity which renewable electricity generators will be paid over time. This introduces risk into the financing of the project because it creates uncertainty over how much income it will be able to earn over its lifetime. The process for getting rocks is also quite complicated with plenty of forms to fill in. So it creates a barrier to small projects which may not have the resources to keep up with the administrative paperwork. To make things easier, in 2010, the UK introduced a support system common in other parts of Europe, known as feed-in tariffs. These offer premium prices for electricity from different types and scales of renewable energy system. The levels are set by the government and published in advance, and energy suppliers are obliged to pay these rates for electricity generated from registered renewable energy projects. The government has also stipulated a minimum price for any electricity exported from the project rather than used in the building on the customer's side of the meter. The whole system is designed to be quite straightforward. In essence, you would be paid for every unit of electricity your system produced, whether or not you use it on site. So, for example, if you have a village hall with a solar PV array and you produce 1,000 kilowatt hours in a year from that system, you will be paid for each of those units at a set price. As an example, for smaller solar PV systems, this is set at 41.3p per kilowatt hour. The rate varies for each technology and the size of the system, but they have been set to produce an attractive payback, taking into account the variations in upfront costs of installing each system. In addition to the money paid for each unit generated, you will also be paid a flat rate of 3p per kilowatt hour for every unit that you export to the grid. The rates of payment are guaranteed for 25 years for solar and about 20 years for most other technologies. They're also index linked, meaning that your payments will rise in line with inflation to ensure that their real value remains the same. The income is also tax exempt for personal use. The scheme also has a characteristic called digression. What this means is that there is an assumption that as time goes on, the feed-in tariff will encourage lots more renewable energy systems to be installed. This means that the cost of installing the technologies should come down. So, 
The rates that you are paid will reduce over time, depending on what year you enter the scheme. If you install a solar system now, you will be guaranteed the current payments for the full 25 years. If you install a solar system 10 years from now, your payments will be at a different lower rate. But the lower rate will be guaranteed for the next 25 years. That's only fair since people entering now will be paying more for their systems up front because installation costs will come down in the future. Any renewable energy project therefore has a choice between the certainty, low risk, and relatively simple process of the feed-in tariff and the less certain, higher risk, but potentially higher return rock system, especially for wind projects. For most smaller projects, it will almost certainly make sense to use the feed-in tariff system rather than rocks to earn premium prices for the electricity output of your project. For larger wind projects, and certainly those above 500 kilowatts, it would be worth undertaking a more careful assessment of both options and the associated risks and potential rewards. Because the feed-in tariff only supports electricity producing technologies, the UK government announced plans to introduce a similar support mechanism for renewable heat, providing a premium price for heat systems like biomass boilers, heat pumps and solar hot water. If introduced, the so-called renewable heat incentive would improve significantly the economics of such projects and make some of these important renewable heat sources much more likely to be financially viable. At production of this DVD, the details were not yet finalised. We recommend that you visit the Department of Energy's website for further information at the time of your project. There is more information on the Plan Local website explaining in detail the rates available from the feed-in tariff and ROCs and to keep you up to date with developments on the renewable heat incentive.